on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. I would like to talk to you about Ethereum's upcoming $29 billion hard fork, which could be happening as soon as October 2018. So I'm really addressing three groups of people today. One is crypto enthusiasts who just love to keep up on current events. You guys are not really any risk of this news, so just chill out and enjoy yourselves. Second group is uh, investors and speculators in the Ethereum token itself. You guys might want to know this because it increases the risk to you financially. And third group is uh, businesses who are developing or using the Ethereum network, rather developing an app on the Ethereum network or you know, using the, ne the Ethereum network for business. You guys may already well, be well aware of this situation, but also need to pay attention because of the increased risk to your business until this situation resolves itself. So that is the service I'm going to provide to you today. If you don't fall into any of those categories, well, then just stare at my handsome face for the duration of the video and see if you can derive any value from today's content. So we, I'm calling it Ethereum's $29 billion hard fork because that's the current market cap of Ethereum. And uh, don't shoot the messenger, I kind of stole that from Coindesk's headline. So sometime in October or November of 2018, Ethereum will hard fork to install a set of upgrades known as Constantinople. And this upgrade has been on Ethereum's roadmap for a while. So the majority of the community are all well aware that it's coming. It's not like an emergency or anything. However, it brings up one of our old favorite topics that applies across the board in the world of cryptocurrencies. And it's the topic of governance, which is that process of making collective decisions amongst the human participants. Now, something that's scaring a lot of people about Ethereum these days is this thing called the difficulty bomb. Now, call something a bomb, that's going to scare people right out of the gates. You know, like I said yesterday about, got to be careful with the language because it's the words that carry the meaning. So as soon as you say bomb, you think destruction, danger, bad, blah, blah, right? Now, this difficulty bomb, it's not a bug or anything. It's something that the Ethereum developers have put there on purpose as kind of an incentive or rather as a way to force the miners to move to a proof of stake mechanism and away from proof of work. So once the difficulty bomb explodes, the mining difficulty on the Ethereum network will suddenly become so high that it will mean um, no amount of mining power would be able to create an Ethereum block without years and years of proof of work mining. So since, since Ethereum relies on uh, blocks being mined every like 15 seconds or so, having to wait years for just one block uh, pretty much makes the network completely unusable unless everyone starts creating blocks by proof of stake. So that's the idea. So the idea is not to destroy the Ethereum network, it's to make it more sustainable and more scalable by moving to proof of stake and disincentivizing proof of work. So the difficulty bomb makes sure that there remains just one Ethereum network after proof of stake activates. Uh, that's since the proof of work version of the chain will intentionally grind to a halt. Now we've known about the difficulty bomb for a while again, but as time passes, it creeps ever nearer. And we're expecting the bomb to go off sometime in early 2019, according to this Coindesk article. It depends when we reach a certain block number on the Ethereum chain. That's really what determines when these things activate. So the upgrade to Ethereum that converts it to a proof of stake is known as Casper. You might have heard of that before. Now Casper absolutely must be ready to take over when the difficulty bomb goes off or the proof of work chain will just stop dead without an alternative. The problem is it um, looks like Casper is not going to be ready before the difficulty time bomb goes off. And I say that because of what I've been reading in the Ethereum community these days. So let's first go over to Etherchain. So let me just read this. This says, what should be done regarding proof of work issuance until Casper is ready? And this is a poll being run on the Ethereum network where Ethereum token holders can basically cast a vote and uh, have their opinion. So it says here, Casper has been delayed until 2019, 2020. In order to keep Ethereum functioning normally under proof of work, the difficulty bomb needs to be pushed back. 
The best time to do this is the scheduled Constantinople hard fork coming up shortly. There are a number of proposals for pushing back the difficulty bomb. This coin vote is to indicate which proposal the community supports most strongly. And then it says note, the difficulty bomb code enforces regular hard forks while Ethereum operates under proof of work. Removing the difficulty bomb entirely would enable miners to continue with the current chain forever. That's bad, right? We don't want the current chain to continue because then we would have one Ethereum network on proof of stake, one Ethereum network on proof of work. Um, so that's the purpose of the difficulty bomb is to cut this chain off so that everyone moves over to proof of stake. And in fact, we already have a proof of stake, sorry, a proof of work Ethereum network. It's called Ethereum Classic. So that would mean there would be three Ethereum chains, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum proof of work and Ethereum proof of stake. That's bad, right? So we don't want that. So anyway, the other complication here is that uh, inflation is tied to block production, meaning, and this is this is the case with proof of work coins in general, every time a block is mined, in this case, an Ethereum block is mined, new Ethereum is created, and that's what's used to reward the miner. So the higher the difficulty, the slower the blocks, the slower the blocks, the slower the inflation rate, and the less mining rewards there are, right? So there's this segment of the Ethereum community who want to reduce Ethereum's inflation rate, and that's basically what the poll is dealing with. So lower inflation means less money paid to miners when they mine a block. And let's just pop back to the um, to the poll here. You'll notice that there's like three votes, which doesn't even register on the percentage meter. So that's for, yeah, let's remove the difficulty bomb completely and increase Ethereum mining rewards to five Ether per block. Almost nobody has voted for that. Almost nobody has voted for remove the difficulty bomb entirely and leave the issuance unchained, unchanged rather at three Ether per block. And most people are voting in the middle, which is delay the difficulty bomb and reduce the uh, Ethereum mining rewards to either one or two Ether per block. Now, bear in mind the numbers of people that have voted. There's only like 170 votes have been cast so far and what, 100 and 51,000 Ether has voted, which is a relatively small amount, to be honest. So just let's bear that in mind. So lowering the mining rewards means mining is less profitable, leading to miners potentially dropping out, thus making a mining attack on Ethereum um, on the network require less resources. So that's what people mean when they say fewer miners means the network is you know less secure. But here's a quote, here's quote, quote, Fun fact, in the last 365 days, the Ethereum network has paid $6.6 billion to miners, close quote. That's a quote from a trader named Eric Connor. Now, I guess one segment of the Ethereum community think that that's too much money, and that's why they want the mining reward reduced to two Ether per block, down from three Ether per block, or even down to one Ether per block. That's what the ether chain um, poll is talking about. Another thing compounding the problem though is the significant fall in the Ethereum price lately. Let's actually now go over to the Ethereum chart as measured in US dollars. So on the far right of the chart here, we now see that Ethereum is a good $75 below its April lows. And right now it's trading close to its yearly lows, it's trading close to its 2018 lows. And these are prices, if you follow the red price line, these are prices not seen since September of 2017. So this is another force that's negatively affecting the um, Ethereum miners profits. So the price is going down, but also if then we reduce the mining reward per block, that's, that's a double whammy on a Ethereum miners profits. So Ethereum miners are just not having a good time right now and are probably quite worried about the future of their businesses. So what does the almighty creator of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, think to all this? Well, in a comment that he posted on uh, GitHub, in response to Ethereum improvement proposal 1295, which deals with reducing the mining rewards for uncles, which is a particular type of uh, block that is mined, 
He says here, let's have a read of it. Three days ago, he says, I'm scared of this. And he's referring to reducing the mining rewards for uncle blocks. With the current uncle rates continuing to be around 20% and continuing to be greatly differing between miners with lows of 8% approximately and highs of approximately 40%, there are, sp there are significant potential centralization risks if the reward differences between these pools are further exacerbated. Currently, Ethermine and Nano pool differ approximately 20% in uncle rates with current reward levels. This leads to a 3-5% to percent difference in revenue. But with the proposal, this could easily go up to 15-18% to 18 and could further increase concentration. So, to me, that means if profit margins for miners shrink, only the biggest, most efficient mining operations will be able to sustain themselves. It's classic um, economies of scale. That's the word I was looking for. So that means the small, smaller miners go out of business and the Ethereum network becomes more centralized. So I'm sorry to say I don't have any hard conclusions for you on this because it's still very much all up in the air. So why much of this that I've talked about today seems like technical detail. I think it's important for you to be aware of because if you're speculating on Ethereum's price, like we mentioned at the beginning, well, there's a risk financially there. And if you're building your business in or on or around Ethereum, there's an increased risk to your business there. So that's, like I said, it's the service I'm trying to provide to you today. Now, how you respond to this situation comes down to your risk tolerance. And again, I feel really important to say that this is, this is me providing a service to you. This isn't a, you know, a for or against Ethereum as a, as a technology or anything. This is, a, you know, this is the uh, objective view of this is actually happening. So how do we, as investors, speculators, whatever, crypto enthusiasts, how do we respond to it, really? That's, that's my responsibility to you. It's not to uh, Ethereum community. It's not to the EOS community. It's really, I'm accountable to you. So how do we respond to this situation? It comes down to your risk tolerance, right? I can't give you any financial advice on an individual level because I don't know your individual circumstances. Plus I'm not qualified to give financial advice anyway. On a principle level, the standard way to respond to a situation of increased risk is to reduce your risk exposure. So that would mean selling a proportion of your Ethereum holdings until everything settles down. And again, that would apply if the situation was in EOS as well, right? Whenever there's EOS turmoil, people choose to step out, sell their tokens until things settle down and then buy back in. So this is universal principle of advice. So if you want to reduce your risk, that would be one way of doing it. Or buy Ether would be what you would do if you wanted to increase your risk exposure, which again would be with the intention of uh, gaining a higher reward if the situation resolves itself to the positive side and the price goes up. But in any case, that is a choice that I leave to you and your financial advisor. But that's all I've got for you today. So if you like this episode, go ahead and hit the like button. If you disliked it, you can hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, check out my website. It's cryptoversity.com. If you click on courses, you can learn how blockchain technology works under the hood. That would be the Digital Money Revolution course. If you just want to know 21 fast track ways to make and save money with Bitcoin without all the technical bits, take the Secrets of the Bitcoin Triangle course. And if you want to learn how to make money by trading in and out of cryptocurrencies, well then take the Master Cryptocurrency Trader course. If you want to follow me on the social networks, on my website, if you go to the podcast page, it lists all the various social networks that I'm on. So pick your favorite one and follow me on there. Other than that, I will be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.